Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game video. Today we're taking a look at Rata Drabic of Urborg as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and I've built a combo version of this deck. The 4-mana 3-3 Zombie Wizard has Vigilance and Ward 2, saying other zombies we control have Vigilance, but more importantly, whenever another legendary creature we control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So that's the ability we're really going to abuse in this deck. And Rata Drabic happens to combo very nicely with a new ring bearer mechanic. I've got a whole bunch of ring bearers as you can see, including all 9 Nazgul with all different arts. And Nazgul school when it enters the battlefield has the ring tempt us and part one of any ring bear is that it becomes a legendary so let's say we play the nazgul on turn three made it our ring bear it is now legendary then turn four play rata drabic then if we have any way of sacrificing our nazgul especially if it doesn't cost us any additional mana then the nazgul will come back as a 2-2 a non-legendary version of itself but because the ring tempts us when it enters, we can make that Nazgul token into a legendary creature. So once again, if we sacrifice it to that effect, we can return it as a 2-2 thanks to Rata Drabic's ability. Because it doesn't care whether it's a token or non-token, it just cares about whether it's a legendary or not. And thanks to the ring mechanic, we can keep making that same creature legendary. So now we could infinitely sacrifice the same Nazgul if we have one of the cards in this next category in play. Like maybe an Ashnaut's Altar, sacrifice a creature and double callless to our mana pool will also generate infinite colorless mana for what it's worth, so that can maybe convert into something useful. But that still doesn't necessarily win us the game. We can get the ring to level 4, which helps us deal additional damage. We also get to draw and discard when our ring bear attacks with a level 2 ring, so that's useful. But we still need something that actually will help us close out the game after infinitely sacrificing our Nazgul, and that's where this next category comes in handy. We've got a lot of these blood artist-like abilities. Whenever a creature dies, we get to drain the opponent for one and gain one life, so that can help us cross the finish line once we establish Nazgul alongside Rata Drabic and one of these sacrifice outlets. Then we also have Boromir in the deck, which can help us both fulfill the role of a ring bear as well as a sacrifice outlet, because we can sacrifice Boromir at any point, and then at creatures we control gain indestructible until end of turn, and the ring tempts us. So we can keep sacrificing Boromir over and over again alongside Rata Drabic, and then we just need a Blood Artist effect, so that can potentially set up the win on turn 4 if we curve turn 2 Blood Artist, turn 3 Boromir into a turn 4 Rata Drabic. That's the easiest way to win, otherwise we both need a ring bear as well as a sacrifice outlet. I've got the deck split up into a few other categories. We've got some interaction, a bit of mana acceleration which is pretty useful. Then we've got some ways to protect the combo, either discard spells or ways to actually protect our creatures in play. Then we've got a ton of ring bears including the Nazgul. We also have Samwise as a cheap ring bear for two mana that can also maybe get something back from the graveyard. And then as we mentioned Boromir doubles as a sacrifice outlet and a ring bear. And then our win conditions include ways to drain the opponent, but also maybe ways to double our tokens with Anointed Procession and Mondrak. That way we maybe get to make infinite Nazgul or infinite Boromirs, which is also enough to win the game. And then we've got a few more card draw effects and tutor effects to help find the missing combo pieces in this last category. Okay, so that's a quick rundown of our strategy. For those that want a more detailed breakdown, we'll keep going, starting with our spot removal where we've got Source to Plowshares, a staple in any white historic brawl deck. Then in black we've got Cut Down and Fatal Push to maybe take out opposing mana creatures to try and slow the opponent down. And then at 2 mana there's a Go for the Throat and Heartless Act. And then Loran can also help us destroy artifacts or enchantments. It's also legendary, so has a bit of synergy with Rata Drabic. Then we've got some mana acceleration, starting with Dark Ritual can give us a nice mana boost. Shambling Ghast, if it dies, generates a treasure token. We've got a few more ways to sacrifice it in this deck as well, so that's always nice. Then the Wayfarer's Bauble I like in some of these non-green decks that might otherwise struggle to accelerate their mana. Can be nice to play on turn 1 and sacrifice on turn 2. Then a Lotho can help us make a treasure whenever we cast a second spell each turn, also applies to the opponent. Even if it costs us one life, it's usually worth it. And another legendary creature that synergizes with Rata Drabic. Then we've got the classic two mana ramp artifacts, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone. And then at three mana, a Relic of Legends makes sense, since we've got quite a few legendary creatures that will be able to tap for extra mana. And then the Celestus helps us draw and discard as it switches between day and night. 
and Warden Power Stone can make two mana potentially if we untap with it. Then in our protection category, we've got Giver of Runes and Skrelv as one mana creatures. Skrelv has the advantage of being a legendary creature as well. We've got Lauren's Escape and Surge of Salvation to give our permanence hexproof, and in the case of Lauren's Escape, also indestructible. And then a few discard effects with Duress, Inquisition of Kozilek, and Thoughtseize, mostly to take away opposing removal spells or sweepers. And then Reprieve as a white pseudo counterspell can also buy us more time. And then in our ring bearer section we mostly just have Nazgul, which are also quite good in multiples as they can pick up additional plus one plus one counters pretty quickly. And then as Samwise, as we mentioned, can also maybe get something back from the graveyard, pretty good alongside a fetch land or some other sacrifice effect. And then in our Sacrifice Outlet category, the best one is potentially Altar of Dementia outside of Boromir, as we can sacrifice a creature and then target player mills cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. So if we have Altar of Dementia, a Ring Bearer, and a Ratadrabic, we don't really need an extra win condition since we can just mill the opponent out, and once they draw from an empty library, we win the game. And then Boromir does double duty of protecting the team, being a ring bear and a sacrifice outlet, so by far the card we search for the most often with our various tutor effects. Then the blood flow connoisseur can sacrifice a creature to get a plus one plus one counter, so technically if the opponent doesn't have any blockers and we assemble connoisseur with a Nazgul and Tratadrabic, we could make an infinitely large connoisseur to kill the opponent, although usually they'll have some blockers, so we still need an extra win condition. And then a Wostrider can let us scry one whenever we sacrifice a creature, so it can help us dig towards the missing combo pieces, and also comes into play with a goat token, which we can sacrifice. Yaheni is a legendary sacrifice outlet, so we can maybe search it up with something like Search for Glory or War of the Last Alliance, and then we can sacrifice a creature to make it indestructible, and when opposing creatures die it picks up a plus one plus one counter. We've got Ashnod's Altar, sacrificing a creature for two colorless mana, and finally Yogmoth also requires us to pay one life whenever we sacrifice a creature, but then we get to also draw a card, so we do need a way to offset the life loss from Yogmoth if we want to go infinite, but can usually get there with a Blood Artist, which will drain the opponent for one and gain one life whenever a creature dies, so that can help out. And besides Blood Artist, we also have Zulaport Cutthroat at 2 mana, Cruel Celebrant, and the Sadistic Pilgrim, all very similar. And then at 3 mana there's Bastion of Remembrance, which also drains the opponent for 1 each time. And at 5 mana there's Sir Conrad, which also will deal 1 damage to each opponent whenever another creature dies, so that can also win us the game if we can infinitely sacrifice the same creature over and over, even though it doesn't necessarily offset Yogmoth's ability. And then we also have the Anointed Procession and Mondrak to help us make infinite tokens, especially fun with Nazgul if we can make infinite Nazgul, which work very well with each other since they'll also become infinitely large. And then Boromir can help us make infinite tokens that aren't legendary so we can keep them all in play at the same time, so that's also win condition with Procession or Mondrak. Then a Pitiless Plunder can make a treasure token whenever another creature we control dies, so that can help make infinite mana to hopefully cast the rest of our hand and win the game. And then a Taisa will double our triggers whenever a permanent we control dies, so that can also potentially double the triggers from Ratodrabic and essentially make infinite tokens similar to Procession and Mondrak. And then we already discussed Sir Conrad. And then in our card draw and tutor section, we've got Call of the Ring, which can help us make a creature into a ring bear each turn and then pay two life to draw a card. And then a Deadly Dispute can sacrifice a creature or artifact to draw two cards and make a treasure, whereas Nasty End can only sacrifice creatures. But if it's a legendary, which is pretty likely, we get to draw three as opposed to two. Diabolic Intent also requires a sacrifice, but then we can search our library for any card and put it into our hand. It's a pretty nice demonic tutor like effect. We've got a Search for Glory, which can potentially gain some life back if we used our snow mana to cast it, so that's why we see these snow covered basics in the deck. And then we can search our library for a snow permanent card, a legendary card, or a saga card. So we've got plenty of legendaries that can help win the game. Of course, our Samwise and Boromir as ring bearers. Then we also have additional sacrifice outlets that are legendary, like Yaheni and Yogmoth. And in this final section, there's even more legendaries, like maybe our Sadistic Pilgrim to drain the opponent to death, or Taisa to make infinite tokens. And then we also have Grim Tutor as a 3 mana tutor effect that will cost us 3 life, can find any card. And War of the Last Alliance, similar to Search for Glory, can find several legendaries on the first two chapters, so that can also help assemble the combo. And then a mana base is mostly just black-white dual lands, a couple utility lands like Abandoned Mire, and the Iganjo can also be quite effective as we have plenty of legendaries to discount them, and Castle Lockthwain can also draw more cards to help assemble the combo. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Venser Corpse Puppet. And our hand's pretty nice. We've got 
two of our cheap ring bearers. Boromir can go infinite by itself, basically. So we just need something that drains the opponent whenever a creature dies. Um, and then Ghast, I could also play turn one. Although I could just fetch a Swamp with Fabled Passage. So we don't have to worry about a tap land later. And that also saves me a bit of damage with a silent clearing. Opponent's gonna potentially try and poison us to death. And then for now Mindstone, turn 3 Ratadrabic is an option. Or we can double spell Boromir Shambling Ghast. Yeah, let's resolve Ratadrabic while the coast is clear, and then our opponent's unlikely to take it out with Ward 2. And then next turn we can protect our creatures with Loran's Escape. So, opponent could have a counter spell in hand. Don't necessarily want to get Boromir countered. Uh, so maybe start with Shambling Ghast. And then what I could do is, end of turn, sacrifice Mindstone, and then get it back with Samwise at instant speed. Shambling Ghast is also a zombie, so it does have Vigilance. Not gonna attack in case your opponent can proliferate at instant speed. Don't wanna have to waste my Loran's Escape. It's gonna be Prologue, Apply Poison, Draw card. And Contentious Plan will proliferate and draw. So our opponent gets a 3-3. Three, three. And so it begins. I'll stick to the plan here. Sacrifice Mindstone. Play Samwise. Silent Clearing can also draw a card. And if they counter Sam, I can resolve Boromir, which is more important. And uh, yeah, let's make Samwise our ring bear. Dark Ritual, not really what we need here. Play Mindstone, play Boromir. That resolves. Okay, could potentially sacrifice Boromir just to get the ring to level 2 so we can start looting once we attack. But let's just uh, pass a turn for now and maybe set that up next turn. So yeah, any of our Blood Artist effects now could win us the game. Flux Channeler can help them proliferate. And a Bounce Spell for Sam. That seems fine, I don't think I need to Loran's Escape. Now I'll be able to uh, sacrifice Mindstone again and replay Samwise. And then Dark Ritual can maybe go. Bone can hit us with a Sentinel. That's fine. So I can get the ring to level 4 here in the meantime. And then we don't have Summoning Sickness so we can attack if we want to. Okay, I gun show the draw. So get in with Boromir. And draw Fatal Push, that could come in handy. Discard. Probably I Ganjo. Boone's gonna take it. And then Got a couple options here, but I think Sack Mindstone is good enough. Find Castle, that's more card draw. Although I might want to just play Samwise. We also enabled Revolt for Fatal Push, so I can take out Flux Channeler. And then Samwise, get back Mindstone. And I could play it or keep up Loran's escape, which is maybe safer. It 
Tyrant's Corn going after Ratadrabic. Let's make them pay the ward. And this would just bounce Ratadrabic, which is a bit of a setback. So that might be worth a Lorenzo escape. Sure. I'll be able to just draw with Castle instead to dig towards a finisher. Surge of Salvation, not really what we need, even though it's another protection spell now that we use Lauren's Escape. Had they tried to take out Boromir, we would have just sacrificed it in response, so that would not have done much. Lauren, I guess, can help us draw, can take out the Sentinel. But let's maybe start by attacking with Boromir, so we get to draw and discard. Heartless Act, more interaction. Maybe it is time to ditch Mindstone now. Play the clearing. A draw with Castle. And then I can still play Loran afterwards. There we go. Now we just win the game if there's no interaction. Resolves. So we can win at instant speed. Um, question is, do I go for it now when our opponent has two mana untapped? If they remove Cutthroat and Response, that could fizzle things out. So maybe I do just pass and let them make the first move. Inquiry, that's fine. So, opponent gets to draw two, we get a poison. Just want them to tap out, basically. Sir Conrad is a redundant cutthroat effect, so that could do it too. Okay, attack with our ring bear. And don't need Loran anymore. Could also just win with damage here from a level 4 ring. Now Venser's gonna die end of turn because of the ring. Conrad drains them. So again, I could go for it. What's the worst that could happen? Our opponent has a removal spell for Rata Drabic in response. So yeah, let's just pass. We can just win with damage next turn. Our opponent does nothing, I can activate Sir Conrad or cast a Deadly Dispute, sacrificing Shambling Ghast, perhaps. Opponent's gonna Cyclonic Rift with Overload, and now the ghost is clear to just win the game in response. So yeah, they had the Cyclonic Rift all along, which would have uh, been able to bounce Rotodrabic, so I'm glad we waited. And it's not going to take too many clicks since we have two drain effects in play. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Rocco Street Chef, a Naya creature deck, and uh, our hands. Interesting, we're missing most of our combo pieces. Do have a Reprieve, which will give us a redraw, and can Dark Ritual a turn 1 Celestus for what it's worth? Yeah, that's actually not bad. Can Celestus end cast Inquisition? And this will help us switch to Nighttime pretty easily, which will help us uh, sculpt a better hand, since we'll be able to keep up Reprieve for next turn. Okay, Prisoners can destroy our Celestus. So probably have to take that. And then Surge of Salvation can go for now. Play a tapped temple. And don't need more mana, just need combo pieces now. Opponent takes two to play Goblin Engineer. Yeah, that seems worth reprieving just to draw a card here and slow the opponent down. Picked up Ashnod's Altar as a sack outlet and Nazgul as our ring bearer. 
So we can essentially go infinite, although we're not actually making any progress if we sacrifice Nazgul, except for making infinite colorless mana, which I guess lets us activate a Celestus. But uh, yeah, we're pretty close to winning the game now. Maybe start with Nazgul, which will be our ring bearer. And then if we can uh, get the ring to level 4, we can also do quite a bit of damage, as well as sculpt our hand. So we'll see if the opponent has any interaction here to try and stop us. Rocco is fine. And a Wormlet's pretty good alongside Rocco. And we found a Bastion of Remembrance, so that's our win condition. So now we've got all the pieces. Godless Shrine can go. And a Grim Tutor also would have helped us find whatever we needed. So yeah, we had everything covered here. Play Bastion. That will drain the opponent for one whenever we sacrifice Nazgul. And now Ashnot's Altar as our infinite sacrifice outlet. And we're off to the races. And our opponent knows what's up here. Awesome. So that was a pretty sweet game. Thanks to turn one, a dark ritual. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Soul of Windgrace. So kind of a rampy potential land destruction deck as well. Got some ramp artifacts, that's useful. Ring bearer times two, and then Diabolic Intent can help get some of our win conditions or sack outlets. Yeah, this sounds okay. We are still missing one card, either a sack outlet or a win condition. And until I find the missing piece, I won't know what to tutor for. But we found our connoisseur, so now we can go get something that drains the opponent. Now we are still kind of stuck on mana here a little bit. But I can go Signet plus uh, Samwise, which we can play at instant speed in case our opponent blows up some of our permanents. And yeah, there's Stone Rain, the classic. So Samwise should be able to get it back, I believe. Any permanents. To the rescue. So now Windgrace also can steal it. Still have four mana. And then Ratadrabic seems okay. And then next turn, what's the plan? If I intend sacrificing Samwise, we get a replacement. Can get the Sadistic Pilgrim. Boromir makes it easier. So that's both a Sack Outlet and a Ring Bear. Still need something that's Accumulates value over time, of course, Nazgul would help there as well. But yeah, let's play Boromir. Upside of Nazgul is better to get to draw and discard with Samwise right now. But if they have more removal for my Cold Steel Hearts, I may not get a chance to cast Boromir for quite some time. So yeah, let's just play Boromir. And attack. So we have access to a level 4 ring if we wanted to. Can also help us draw and discard. And then it's just a matter of Diabolic Intent for Sadistic Pilgrim, for instance. Opponent gets back Stone Rain. They really don't want us to cast our spells. Okay, that happens. And then I guess we'll go through the motions right now, so I don't have Summoning Sickness. And I guess with a Nazgul, we can just make an infinitely large Nazgul if we pick up a land. Dark Ritual will do. So attack first. A land is useful. So what don't we need? I guess we have two Nazgul, so one can go. Points down to eight in the meantime. So now with the Dark Ritual, I can cast Diabolic Intent, Sacrificing Samwise, get Sadistic Pilgrim, cast it, and then drain the opponent to death. So we don't even need the Nazgul. And our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. Our hands got all the combo pieces we need to potentially set up the combo on turn 4 already. So I'm definitely keeping. 
Altar doubles up as both a sack outlet as well as a win condition, since we can mill the opponent out with it. And then turn 3 Nazgul as a ring bearer, turn 4 Vata Drabic. So that's the plan. Crawling Chorus, our opponent's a poison deck. Fair enough. Stick to the plan. Don't have a fourth land yet, although we do have a Mind Stone. So we'll see if that uh, will come into play here. Alright, land is perfect. So play nice, cool. And then turn four, we could already win the game. Just hope our opponent doesn't have interaction. Nazgul is a blocker here for the opponent's toxic creatures, so they might want to get rid of it. And yeah, feed the swarm. So I could mill myself here. But for now, let's just mill the opponent's. Because I might want to search up a key combo piece with diabolic intent and don't want to end up milling it. So next turn I could still play Ratadrabic with Ward, it's less likely to die. And then we just need to find another Ring Bearer to win the game. Opponent can play Atraxa, start proliferating the poison. But for now they still attack. So they could have a pump spell of course. Either way, Chorus replaced by another 1-1. One, one. Rat will proliferate if it dies. So maybe block Crawling Chorus, or just take the hit. I'll take 2 Poison up to 5, Atrox up to 6. And then I probably need 2 more turns. If uh, I don't just top deck a Ring Bearer next turn to set up the win. So we might have time to get there. And definitely don't want to lose Ratadrabic here. So we'll allow it. And uh, Raptors next can also proliferate the poison. So they must have something else lined up if they didn't just play Atraxa, which is a bit of a concern. So did not find a Ring Bear. Can however play Mindstone into Celestus into a Celebrant and then next turn with Diabolic Intent find a Ring Bear. Or they can just counter one of my plays here. Negate. Fair enough. At least it didn't negate the Diabolic Intent. Now I'm going to be probably forced to block with Ratadrabic, otherwise we're dead to double proliferate. Desert's Gambit proliferates and draws. So yeah, next turn play Celebrant. Diabolic Intent. And then Samwise would be the cheapest win condition here. Blocking the uh, Crawling Chorus would have kept us at the highest uh, life total in terms of poison. But we probably have to win next turn anyway. Snarl enters tapped, but I think we'll have enough mana regardless since can just Diabolic Intent, Sacrifice, Celebrant. Get Samwise. Because we only have two mana left, so it has to be a Ring Bearer for two or less mana. Play Samwise. Get back Celebrant, that's fine. Samwise is a ring bear. Mill the opponent for two, sacking Samwise. Gets a non legendary token. But uh, can make it legendary again thanks to the ring bear mechanic. Rinse and repeat. Milling the opponent for two every time. Now, if our opponent has an instant speed proliferate effect, they could still win in their upkeep. So, I guess there was a reason to block a crawling chorus last turn instead of the. Blind Belly Rats. This is gonna take a while. There aren't too many instant speed proliferate effects that I know of. And some of them might also be card draw effects. I guess there's like the prologue, draw a card, apply a poison. 
That would be pretty interesting here. If they had the uh, instant Vraska's fall to make us sack a creature and apply poison, I imagine they would have used it last turn. This is also a nice way to see the opponent's entire deck list if you're interested. See a lot of spot removal, lots of poison creatures, proliferate. And yeah, there we see Vraska's fall go to the graveyard. 13 cards remaining. And the rope is starting to burn here, so don't have much time remaining. Five cards left, can we get there in time? I think so. But uh, I appreciate the rope being here for dramatic effect. One card left, and then, very important, gotta play the Snarl, pass a turn, and hope her opponent doesn't have any instant speed, proliferate or poison. Prologue, each opponent gets a poison counter draw card. Yeah, I think this is gonna result in a draw now. Sweet, <laughs> so opponent gets milled, we get poisoned, and there we have it. So, could have avoided that by just blocking Crawling Chorus last turn, but uh, pretty funny to see. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Slimefoot the Stowaway. Our hands got a nice sack outlet, some ramp, interaction, and protection. We are missing a ring bear and an eventual win condition. Something that drains the opponent whenever a creature dies, for instance. But there we go. We've got the Sadistic Pilgrim now. So yeah, we're just a ring bear away from assembling the combo. Lotho's not bad either, so probably an incentive to play Cold Steel Heart on white. And then next turn we could double spell and make a uh, treasure token potentially. Giver of Runes is going to be a lightning rod for removal. Opponent finds their own Blood Artist, okay. So I guess we'll potentially have to take out the opponent's Blood Artist as well. But luckily we have a source to plowshares. Pitiless Plunder would be something that can make infinite mana if it's on our side of the battlefield, but don't really mind it on the opponents. Okay, so we're still searching for a ring bear. I can play Ratadrabic and then still play Pilgrim, make a treasure. That seems fine. Because if we have both Pilgrim and Blood Artist, then we can ignore the opponent's Blood Artist. I'll hang on to Swords to Plowshares for the time being, and hope that there's no Sweeper effect. And then this Cry from Wostrider can also help us in finding a Ring Bear. There's Blood Artist. And the Disciple. Okay. That's fine. No need to source to plowshares anything. So yeah, play Wostrider. Could still draw with Castle Lockthwain as well. Maybe sacking a Go token first just to scry. Nice cool, yeah, that's what we need. So I can just keep it on top and then draw it end of turn, since drawing it now won't leave me enough mana to cast it. So we can pass a turn and then, yeah, next turn we can combo off. Opponent's gonna dig up for just a land, so luckily not using the 4 mana cleaved version. Uh, Lanner Elves is fine. Okay, so everything's in place. We've got protection from Giver of Runes. 
So I don't think anything can go too wrong. I guess uh, transformed growing rights can maybe give them access to an instant speed collected company or court of calling. Forgot to activate castle end of turn, but I don't think it's going to matter. So we could speed up the process by swordsing the opponent's blood artists. But let's go through a couple iterations of the loop just to see what's up. In case her opponent does have interaction. Because yeah, we have two drain effects, the opponent only has a blood artist. And exiling creatures from our graveyard doesn't matter because it's the token that keeps uh, coming back. Nazgul is ring bear. Scry doesn't matter. Yeah, this is gonna take a lot of clicking. So I'll go through a couple more iterations, see if the opponent has something else up their sleeve. And then I'll probably Swords Blood Artist just to speed it up. Alright, looks like our opponent has already seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Jorkadine, red-white equipment. And our hand is missing a Ring Bear and a Sacrifice Outlet. But it's got some decent ramp, Procession's nice. And we've got Castle to maybe draw some more cards as well. I'll try it. Turn two Cold Steel Hearts. Could already play turn three, Rata Drabic, we'll see. A Rabbit Battery gets in for one. Fighter class can get any equipment, potentially Colossus Hammer if her opponents could wait to equip it for free. That would be scary. But no, it's gonna be a sort of fire and ice. Alright, let's play Rata Drabic. And then next turn Relic of Legends is gonna be pretty cheap because we can tap Rata Drabic to make mana, or we can just play Sir Conrad and take it from there. Opponent levels up fighter class to discount their equip costs. Do have to be careful with this sword. If they equip it, they could mow down our cutthroats, whereas two damage is not enough to kill Conrad or Ratadrabic. So there's still an advantage to playing Conrad here. Yeah, that seems fine. And then if Conrad dies, we at least get a token to replace it, whereas that's not true with cutthroat. So Ring Bearer and Sacrifice Outlet still missing. And Ganjo could be useful interaction. So I probably want to try and draw with Castle as much as possible. If I play Relic, play Cutthroat, I'll still have the mana to activate Castle end of turn. So that works for me. And I could also channel Iganjo if needed. Okay, on the rill, so equip that for free thanks to fighter class. Battery is getting bigger. But oof, Colossus Hammer too. Alright. At least they won't be able to equip that for free. So now if battery attacks, I can just trade for Conrad. Or I can channel Iganjo. Trade for Conrad, then our opponent can just equip the Spirit Tokens next turn, although we do have an Iganjo too. Uh, if I channel Iganjo, I'm unable to draw with Castle. Let's just block. And then draw. There's a Ring Bear and a Sacrifice Outlet all rolled into one, so Boromir just wins us the game now. That was convenient. And with both Cutthroat and Sir Conrad, it's going to be pretty quick. Now I will definitely play Procession so we can make infinite Boromirs as well. That'll be fun. Nazgul can also go infinite here. But yeah, this is enough. Sacrifice Boromir, 
get two tokens now. One of them becomes a ring bearer. Sacrifice that to Ratadrabic, make two more tokens, drain for two, and there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Vorinclax Monstrous Raider, a plus one counter deck. Our hand has a potential win condition in the form of Mondrak, helping us make infinite tokens. Tudor can find a ring bearer or a sacrifice outlet, which we both still need. So probably wait until we find one of them. And then in the meantime, we have a bit of interaction. So sure, seems good enough to keep. Turn one plays Krelv. Turn two, we could already Dark Ritual Ratadrabic. Opponent explores. Yeah, let's put a Ratadrabic in play. Next turn I'll keep up Skrelv to protect Rotodrabic, but for now they wouldn't have had the mana to fight Rotodrabic and pay the ward. Alrighty, so can Grim Tutor and get Boromir, I guess, which is both a sack outlet and a ring bear. So that's both rolled into one. And then with Mondrank we can make infinite Boromirs. We're still at 20. Rotodrabic is protected. So yeah, I like my chances. Boromir can also enable Revolt for us. Scavenging Ooze doesn't really interfere. Taisa is also interesting, can also essentially make double the tokens. So both Mondrank and uh, Taysa are kind of equivalent here. But uh, yeah, we essentially have it all rolled up. Pass a turn. No need to Fatal Push anything right now. There's Vorinclex. Opponent's tapped out, leveling up Ranger class. Can see where the counters go, but with Boromir making our team indestructible, they don't have the best of attacks. Vorinclex gets busy. And uh, can do this now to get a level 4 ring for what it's worth. And then soak up the attack. So we still take a little bit of trample. Untap, play Mondrak. And can make infinite Boromirs here. Can also attack. And I guess I'll go for it now. Although with Skralva's protection, even instant speed removal would not really help the opponent. And we're not up against a deck that has access to Rivers Rebuke, which could maybe mess this up. So yeah, our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Atraxa, Grand Unifier. This is going to be a real test. We have multiple tutor effects, so that's promising. Bobble for Bitter Ramp, so I don't hate this hand. Turn one Bobble, and then turn two Sacrifice, setting up hopefully a turn three War of the Last Alliance, which can get our Sadistic Pilgrim plus Boromir, I'm thinking. Could also check if the coast is clear with a Duress, as our opponent keeps up some mana. This will get a swamp. Yeah, I really need this War of the Last Alliance to resolve. Samwise is a draw. Yeah, I think we last alliance it up. 
I'll still have Grim Tutor to find one of the missing combo pieces, and since we have Cutthroat, we don't need Sadistic Pilgrim necessarily. So we'll get this going, or at least try to. It works. So step one, I think Boromir has both Sacrifice Outlets and Ring Bear. Possible that our opponents got a Tails End in hand, which can counter activated or triggered abilities, but they're keeping it to counter my Legendary. So the rest is going to help. Can play it alongside Boromir next turn. And the land is good too. So what's next? So we have basically everything we need. But uh, maybe Pilgrim as a second cutthroat effect is useful. It's also pretty cheap. Could also get Lotho, cast it, play Duress, make a treasure and then still play Boromir. Yeah, I don't hate it. So, play Lotho. And then Duress. See what they're working with. Samwise also a combo with Fabled Passage. So that's also an option. Oof, that's a hand. So Soul Shatter to make a sacrifice a creature alongside Shieldred's Edict. Although now we've got Lotho that can be sacrificed to the Edict. So Soul Shatter is probably the scarier card. We're hoping to combo before Farewell is a factor. So yeah, let's grab Soul Shatter. And then I could make the play with Samwise and Fabled Passage, or I can just play Boromir. I guess an extra mana for next turn would be useful. So I'm not hitting the uh, Samwise play. Especially for opponents goes to cast a Shieldred's Edict end of turn here. So let's put some stops of our own. Alright. Probably should have waited on sacrificing Fabled Passage, but that's okay. So I can get back Fabled Passage, and then Lotho is our ring bearer. And sacrifice Samwise. Not bad. Bone can play it to Fairy. Which could help them cast Farewell next turn by untapping a land. So that's still a bit of a concern, since even a double striking Lotho is not enough damage to take out Teferi. But we can do quite a bit in the meantime with Grim Tutor. So could always Grim Tutor for a Thoughtseize to take the Farewell. I guess I should attack first and see what we draw off the Ring Bear mechanic. A land that could go, or I can discard Nazgul. So Teferi takes four. And then, yeah, Grim Tutor for a discard spell, take Farewell. And then I still have Boromir. That seems fine, and then next turn we can play Ratadrabic and Cutthroat and win the game. So, let's go for Thoughtseize. Emergent Ultimatum, they're pretty far from casting. And play Boromir. Okay, so Putin doesn't get to minus Teferi, so they have one draw step here to hopefully save them. So still one unknown in hand. Paradox Engine doesn't do it. Okay, so we should have it next turn. Yeah, we had a pretty awesome hand, with plenty of disruption, and then Lotho also ended up being pretty useful. Play Ratadrabic, play Cutthroat. And then now we can start sacrificing to drain the opponent to death, and they know what's happening here. Awesome! So even beat the boogeyman of the formats, Atraxa. 
So yeah, overall pretty happy with how this Ratadrabic combo deck turned out. There are still a couple flex slots for sure, just as long as you've got that critical mass of uh, ring bearers, sacrifice outlets and win conditions, you can definitely mess around with how many tutor effects you play, how much interaction, if you lean more heavily into the legendary theme, or maybe make room for more cheap sacrifice creatures. So again, there's a lot of ways to build it, but uh, definitely makes sense to at least have a small ring bearer package to try and go infinite with Ratadrabic. So Boromir is a must-have. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.